All right, just to clarify, this isn't a tutorial, just my experience with Chiaki for deck. I found Chiaki while searching for a way to play my PS5 games around the house. So one, I wouldn't be disturbing anyone trying to watch TV in the next room, and two, to escape those situations where a game might be difficult to explain to others. I've used Remote Play on my iPad and while it worked well I found disconnecting and reconnecting the controller between devices cumbersome and would often result in accidentally waking the PlayStation, which would turn on the TV, defeating the purpose of the endeavour. The Steam Deck has all the same controls as a DualSense, and Chiaki for Deck was readily available on the Discover Store. No GitHub or terminal access needed. So I gave it a shot and have been using it for the last few months. Here's how it's been. Since it's not a Steam game, you will need to manually add it. After that, I added icons, banners, and cover art manually. Once you're in, it's fairly straightforward. You greet it with this pretty simple UI. Honestly, better than what PlayStation is offering. There is settings. And here you can customize a whole bunch of things, haptics, controls, resolution. I leave it at 720 since that's the resolution that the Steam Deck is. You can control audio add a new console, I've got mine added already, and then all of your customization for controls. Now, you're gonna wake up the console, it'll come up as ready, and then you just start with A. Dead easy, honestly better than the default PlayStation app if I'm being honest. Now, once you're in, there are a few more options if you press these two and the bumpers you'll be greeted with a menu where you can control the microphone, which will also control on the PlayStation. I'm gonna leave it off for now. You can adjust how it streams. You can either zoom it to fill or you can stretch it to fill. I just leave it at the default. You can also change the stream quality from default and high. I leave it on high because I think it looks a bit better. And then you can see here, it's, it's not really using that much. Now onto the visual quality. As I've already mentioned, it is fairly good. Uh, on the Steam Deck screen, it looks pretty sharp. I've got the performance overlay running at the top. And as you can see, we are constantly hitting 60. You'll, you'll drop the occasional frame, but it's not noticeable. If I didn't have it there, I wouldn't know. Overall, it's pretty good. The latency is there, but manageable in most games. I can happily play more casual games like Helldivers, Fall Guys, Persona 5, Final Fantasy 16. The latency becomes harder to ignore in shooters. Fortnite is fine for the most part. Um, I've been trying out Destiny 2 and aiming is quite hard when the targets are small and far away and there's a split second delay between when you stop moving and when the cursor stops moving. Any game that requires really fast reflexes and timing might be difficult. Hi-Fi Rush and Need for Speed Unbound are fine, but you have a hard time doing well in games like Thump Up. Battery life is great. The deck isn't doing any of the heavy lifting. Uh, we're only using seven watts. And if I go over to the estimates, I've got well, four and a half hours with 76%, which is pretty good. The device doesn't heat up and the fans don't spin up, making it comfortable for longer sessions. I've happily played for two hours, I think is the most, and I haven't had any random disconnects yet. So that's pretty good. Now this is all great. I can either play on a TV or on the deck in my room. But there is one more way I use the Chiaki, and it's probably my favorite. Hooked up to a monitor. All right, so you can hook it up like that, plug it in, though that would be a bit awkward. What you do is you get a female to female USB adapter, plug it into a high speed cable, plug that in there, grab the other end, plug it into the deck, Bada bing, bada boom. And there you have it. Now, using this setup, I can get comfortable from any distance. One other benefit is if you hook it up to a 16 by nine monitor or TV, you're gonna get the full screen experience. You're not losing anything. Now there are alternatives. Someone in the comments of the previous video asked about GeForce Now. And it seemed like an interesting way to access Steam games that have broken anti-cheat on the deck. So I thought, why not? Hello. 
I didn't use a browser. Someone has made an app that can just be downloaded from the Discover App Store. It was fairly straightforward to set up and get into, but I didn't like it for a few reasons. The first reason being that the resolution felt low. It should have been 1080p, well, 800p on the Steam Deck, but it more often than not felt like 540p. I'm not sure if that's a streaming issue or something on my end, but I didn't have that problem with other streaming options. Also, I found the graphics settings aren't optimized from the get-go. I would often find myself dropping from 60 frames to 30 or 40, usually just because the PC I'm hooking into can't handle it. Now, I could manually go in and set it to 30 FPS, but I feel like it shouldn't be something I do. It should just be set up out of the box. Oof, oh my god. Yeah, stuff like that. Now, I'm not going to complain about the absurdly long queue for most games because I am on the free tier, or that some games don't support Steam Deck controls because they never did to begin with. Some of them are just PC games designed with keyboard and mouse in mind, not controller. I also had some issues with stability and crashes. Uh, in particular, while trying to film this section, it crashed. I'll put that up now. Well, there you go. GeForce Now experience, which I just didn't have with other options. But those aren't my least favorite parts. My least favorite part of GeForce Now is the pricing, which let's get into that. All right, here we go. Here are the pricing options. You see down here, we've got the free one, 1080p 60, half an hour, not bad. But let's say I wanna play it something comparable to the PS5. That would be 1440p with some RTX features. That's $30 a month, Australian. After a year, that would come to $360. $330 if you do the six month option. After two years, you're at about the cost of a digital PS5, and that PS5 is gonna last a lot longer than two years. The other option that almost completely voids GeForce Now's appeal is Xbox Game Pass. If we scroll down to the pricing here, it is $20 a month to get the full access to games. You don't have to buy a game separately and you can stream them with no time limits. The only caveat is that it's limited to 1080p and you miss out on some PC exclusive games. However, GeForce Now's 1080p tier is also $20 and there are no games included. All right, before I go into conclusions, I'll just quickly go over my current network setup. It's fully wireless. The PS5 is connected via Wi-Fi 6 and this one by Wi-Fi 5. On the 5 gigahertz band, you definitely want to use that over the 2.4 just for better latency. As you've seen, my experience has been pretty great, pretty reliable. All that to say, you don't need the latest and greatest to get a good experience. Um, Wi-Fi 7, unnecessary. All right, conclusion time. Chagi for deck is great. It offers more options than Sony and is easy to use. The streaming quality and performance is great on a decent network, while latency is bearable in almost all games bar hyper-competitive shooters, rhythm, and racing games. I'd say it's the best way to stream games if you own a PlayStation, better than using a laptop or iPad or a PS portal. If you don't have a PlayStation, then Xbox Game Pass Ultimate is another good option. I'd ignore GeForce Now for now though. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like or subscribe if you want to see more like it. Bye.